All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, looks like we are live. We are rolling here today. Uh, today's date is Wednesday, August the 17th, and we have a wonderful show here for you guys today. Um, of course, as it is Wednesday, we have the word of the week. Uh, a couple other things that we have also is a new bill that just kind of passed over in the U.S. Um, that I think is actually pretty interesting. Uh, we have an NFT art place over in New York that came out, uh, I want to say like last year. And then we also have a couple of companies that's making digital fashion a real thing. So I definitely want to share that with you guys as well. And the last thing is going to be all about meme stocks. So stay tuned for that and we'll jump right into it. All right, so like I said, the first thing that we have here off the block is going to be all about digital fashion. So there's a couple of companies. Um, there's actually a, a few other ones as well that I'm not going to mention here, but you can kind of look more into them. Uh, but there's two of them that I kind of ran into a, a few months back, and uh, I think they're probably the largest players inside of the uh, digital fashion realm. So first of all, if you don't know what digital fashion is, it's basically... Uh, virtual clothing that you can kind of wear inside the metaverse um, you can actually wear it on yourself as well which I'll show you here shortly um, but essentially the whole aspect around it is actually making all of this fashion stuff a little bit more sustainable um, because there's a lot that goes into making clothing uh, especially like raw materials and stuff like that so what ends up happening is that after all these clothes are made they get sold People buy them, they wear them maybe once, twice, three times, or something like that, and then they go into the trash compactor. Um, that is not very sustainable for the world, so what they're coming up with now is all this virtual, virtual fashion that allows people to actually wear it as many times as they want to in the metaverse. Um, and also, you know, there's no raw materials in that case to be had from that. There's also the aspect of, hey, you can actually resell it over to somebody else. Um, and so on and so forth. So, and then also one thing that I thought about was that, you know, all of these clothes that get made, sometimes it's just a, a t-shirt with a different graphic on it, a uh, plain white t-shirt with just a different graphic on it. So if you could just have a plain white t-shirt inside the metaverse and just a virtual version of it, you can actually swap out that graphic on it multiple times over and over again um, without having to basically remake a whole brand new shirt. So it actually becomes a whole lot uh, cheaper in that aspect. Uh, as you can see here, there's a couple of benefits that they mention. Um, they give three designers. Uh, well, this is this for this company. They give three to designers and a traditional fashion brands a platform to sell and distribute digital clothing. Uh, on average, designers will save 70% of their monetary budget by creating their collection digitally. Uh, similarly, the digital influencer gifting costs for a campaign are reduced by 60%. The construction of digital couture brands has far less waste, energy, and air miles. No water, no chemicals are used for the creation or uh, usage of digital fashion. The <clears throat> production of a digital garment on average saves 97% less, uh, or leaves, sorry, leaves 97% less CO2 footprint and no microplastic shedding, uh, no soil degradation, degradation uh, compared to the production of a physical garment. Uh, and then you can kind of scroll down here as well. And again, as always, I'm going to leave the link to all of these articles in the description for this video. But you can kind of scroll down here and just see how it works actually in detail. Uh, but I did want to jump over to the actual company. So the first one, as you can see here, is Dress X. This uh, article here was pretty much just introducing Dress X. And it's actually pretty cool. So on this website for Dress X, it's just dressx.com. And uh, they have essentially a uh, partnership with PacSun um, to make clothing and stuff like that. And the way that they're doing is a little bit different. So it's not 100% fully virtual clothes that you wear only in the metaverse. Uh, you can actually wear it on your person as well because uh, their aspect or their thought process around it is this. So you end up wearing clothes sometimes um, basically just for the gram, as they say. Uh, so what you end up doing, you buy in the clothes, you wear it once, you take a whole bunch of pictures of it, uh, on your night out or whatever and you put it away in your closet and you forget about it uh, so their whole thought process is since you're essentially doing this for likes and views and stuff like that um, what they want is that 
in order to make everything sustainable, they will actually create the clothes for you digitally. You can still go out, um, you know, do whatever you want to do. Uh, but what you end up doing is sending them a picture of yourself posing in whatever pose that you uh, want to. And then when you send them a picture of it, they actually place that digital clothing on your body in that same exact pose uh, in the area or location that you were in. And then from there, they send it back to you so that you'll be able to actually post it. Um, so they have these clothing here that's all, you know, uh, digitally made, virtual made. This person right here did not have these pants on before, but after they sent them in their uh, image, a picture of themselves, they went ahead and put these clothes on them and then so on and so forth. Um, same with these pants. And they also have, you know, of course, they have the other, um, cause like stuff like this, this is actually for inside the metaverse. I don't think anybody's actually going to be wearing this out or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, they also have, you know, some of these clothing for inside the metaverse as well. Um, this is actually a pretty cool hoodie there. I like that one. The smiley brand here. Got shoes as well. Um, yeah, so they have their own app in which you can, they call it their uh, meta closet, whatever, they have their app for that. Um, so yeah, you, I'm just kind of showing you guys what some of this looks like. And I mean, digital fashion has really come a long way. I like the way that it's actually trending because some of this stuff, you know, it's really hard to make it. So I just say like making 100,000 of these to put in stores, you know, it's going to be a lot of, uh, again, raw materials for that. Uh, for this hat here, there's probably a lot of dye, even this dress. I mean, even the dress, there's a lot of dye that goes into actually creating all this stuff. Um, but now with this digital fashion, you can actually uh, basically just own the, um, garment without actually having to get the actual garment, uh, which is another nice thing, you know, you're dealing with like NFTs or whatever, you own the rights to the design for the garment. And then from there, well, they have an art collection as well. Uh, if you own the rights to the design of it, you could potentially one day actually get the clothing created. All right. Uh, so yeah, definitely check out Dress X. And then the other one is The Fabricant. Uh, I think I heard of the Fabricant first before Dress X and then Dress X came along. Um, but the Fabricant is also really nice. They, I think their platform is a little bit bigger than Dress X, or at least was. Um, and they allow you to co-create unique digital fashion NFTs uh, and start building your wardrobe for the metaverse. So they're really all about the metaverse and stuff like that. So you can see here, they have different garments. You can actually swap out the design of them. You can get custom fabric and all that stuff, uh, add colors to it, so on and so forth. You can mint your NFT uh, on the uh, Flow blockchain. I guess that's the blockchain they use, the Flow blockchain there. And then you're good to go. So you got a couple of campaigns going on now, the Fabricant label, and then also World of Women. Uh, this is their marketplace. I'll click on a marketplace here shortly because I think that's, yeah. So they got a couple of creators here, <clears throat> people who actually create garments and people who just create, you know, the material or what it looks like and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so you can create one of a kind digital fashion items. Every item is unique. Monetize your craft. You decide the price with royalties split equally among the co-creators. Earn fabric, uh, flat coins, and participate in the DAO. So again, DAO is this decentralized autonomous organization. Uh, I had a video on that before. So you can just want to show you guys what some of these items look like. Again, for you to wear. Some of these actually don't look too bad. <laughs> this bag has eyes on it. And there you go. All right, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about that there. Um, again, with NFTs, um, with art, with fashion, everything is really shifting gears, uh, being disrupted by this whole metaverse Web3 world that we are now jumping into. 
um, all of this digital technology and stuff like that. So uh, it's going to be quite interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, and then also next up, we have a NFT art gallery that is real pretty much uh, that lives in New York. I'm going to play a video first for it here. Digital art's now on display at a new physical gallery in Union Square. Matt King takes us inside the first of its kind space where buyers can check out the online collectibles in person. We really want to show the artwork as the artist intended. High resolution, 4K. Super Chief Gallery Director and Co-Founder Ed Zipko stood in front of a monitor displaying a piece of digital art titled Lock One, described by the artist 1010, as a new work that's the result of ongoing studio research into programming and animation and for sale for two Ethereum, or a little more than $4,000 as of Monday afternoon. Within our first week, we had $150,000 worth of sales, and 85% of that goes to our art community. Zipco is not some wow, that's amazing. token opportunist before opening this, the world's first physical permanent NFT art gallery. It's wild being the first one in the world. Zipco ran other galleries showcasing digital art as far back as 2016. Well, it was a lot harder to sell. The NFT craze has generated not only interest in the works Zipco curates, but also advice, support, and investment from some of the biggest players in the NFT space. With NFTs, there's an ability to have provenance and an ability to actually sell the work. The collection on display through the end of May showcases five new artists every day. 70% of them traditional artists with works in physical museums. The other 30% more established. The keepers are always kind of skeptical of change and really hesitant to allow new artists and new mediums into the traditional art world. On Monday, Super Chief started showing NFT artwork on 10 giant billboards and 80 smaller screens in Tokyo. In Union Square, I'm Matt King, Fox 5 News. Very cool. Yeah. All right, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. I'm going to jump over here to their actual website for Super Chief. Um, and as you can see here, and I'm, I'm pretty sure, so that video was out like last year, 2021. Um, but as you can see here, they kind of grew a little bit as well. Um, that looks disgusting. <laughs> uh, membrana. Wow, that looks weird. Um Season 1 NFT, so this is the Super Chief inaugural NFT collection in Venice, Italy. Cool. So they got cyberpunk stuff on there. I mean, this is all really, really interesting. I want to see if they have an actual... They got the... Let's go to their about page real quick. Um... Yeah, so they've been around for a long time, a decade, but they, uh, I guess they were the first one to really uh, take on hand in hand the NFT art space and open up a whole gallery around it. Uh, yeah, March 2021, the NFT art gallery officially opened as the world's first in real life NFT gallery inside of New York. And I just want to see a couple of the event photos. I'm assuming they just basically have a whole bunch of screens up. Yeah, showcasing all the work and stuff like that. So yeah, if you're in New York, definitely check out um, this space. Uh, whatever, next time I go back, I'm definitely going to have to take out Super Cheap. I'm not even sure where they're located. I didn't see an address on their about page. Let me go back there real quick. Oh, no. You're okay, right up here at the top. Um... Oh, wait, so L.A. and Italy is the only one that they're showing. Are they no longer in New York? They might not even be in New York anymore. I guess I had to hit them up on, like, Twitter or something like that and see. Hmm, interesting. Um, so, yeah, so the next thing that we have here is going to be the word of the week. And the word of the week is going to be proof of stake. The reason being is because... Ethereum is now switching from a proof of work model over to a proof of stake model. And every time I try to research proof of work, proof of stake, the basically definition of them, um, pretty much all the articles that I saw, everybody was doing the same song and dance, repeating themselves over and over again, uh, until I came over to Investopedia. And I love Investopedia, like hands down the best website I ever found uh, for like information and definition on stuff. So, so on and so forth. Um, and they gave a wonderful breakdown of proof of work, wonderful breakdown of proof of stake and then the differences between the two. 
Uh, so without going through the entire article, because it actually is pretty long, I'll just kind of sum it up here. Uh, so proof of work is essentially, so basically this is all about, you know, getting um, uh, stuff through the blockchain. So like the transactions, uh, NFTs go through the blockchain, cryptocurrency goes through the blockchain, everything goes through the blockchain and everything has to be verified. It has to be validated by somebody somewhere to say, hey, yes, this actually did happen. Uh, but the only way to do that is through algorithms, um, computer computations, and that takes a lot, a lot of work to do. Um, so the proof of work model is where basically um, it's a competition. So let's say five people, um, in order for them to win that block uh, or basically win verifying that transaction so that they earn uh, cryptocurrency or they earn whatever they earn for mining, um, or basically verifying that transaction, they end up having to compete with one another. And the only way you can compete is if you have the biggest, the baddest, the fastest, the whatever, whatever, whatever computer out there. Uh, so people are like buying up a whole bunch of graphics card, buying up a whole bunch of computers and making that mining process very, very expensive. Um, because again, they're just trying to hurry up real quick, solve that, you know, computation the algorithm for that one transaction there uh, as well as multiple other transactions as well and it becomes very uh, ener energy um, heavy in the world because um, again using up all of those computers and stuff like that uh, i think i had a article or i think i had a show before about in texas texas actually had to uh, go to some of these crypto miners and said hey can you please stop mining just for a little bit so we can have energy for the rest of the the, uh, the state and stuff like that and you know the crypto community was like yeah sure that's no problem um but so that's how proof of work works so they just basically um as a competition between a group of people saying hey i was the first one to compete it complete it um i win yada 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 so now proof of stake is really much more about how much stake do you have in the game um so it basically says like hey you have to have a certain amount of, uh, let's just call it Bitcoin. It's, I mean, it all depends on the cryptocurrency, but let's just say Bitcoin for this example. You have to have a certain amount of Bitcoin in the game uh, in order for you to be selected uh, randomly by, you know, the, I guess, people that selected or whatever. I'm not sure what to call them. Um, but they have to, let's say, say they have to have like 20 Bitcoin or something like that. If you don't have 20 Bitcoin, you can't even be in the running for it. Um, so therefore, if you have 20 Bitcoin, you can say, hey, I want to throw my hand up. Can I solve this computation? Can I solve the algorithm? They'll say, hey, yeah, sure. Here you go. Here's all the stuff that you need for it. And then they actually go ahead and solve it. So essentially, you no longer need a whole bunch of computers to compete with other people. You can just have one computer that to solve that one transaction that you have been uh, selected to do. So that proof of stake actually is a whole lot better uh, for energy, hold up, uh, better for efficiency. Um, I'm not sure about speed. I'm assuming the speed is going to be pretty, pretty good as well. Uh, and that's one reason why Ethereum is actually switching over to um, uh, what's it called, proof of stake, rather than using proof of work, uh, because their gas fees were like crazy, ridiculous high, because <clears throat> how much, mo how much energy it actually takes to do that as well. But I'm not sure. Didn't really say much about the speed of it, which I had to, I mean, that's why, you know, this is all pretty new. And that's why um, Ethereum has been doing a lot of testing on that POS, on their test net and everything, because uh, we are not sure how it's all going to play out. Hopefully it does do pretty well. Other systems, other currencies and stuff like that who are currently using the POS model uh, have been doing pretty well. But I think speed will be a major factor in that. All right, so the next thing that I have here for you guys is meme stocks. So the Fed is saying now that meme stocks might blow up the U.S. economy one day. Uh, so if you don't know what a meme stock is, uh, I have another wonderful article from Investopedia. Again, they basically break down what a meme stock is, and it's essentially one of those kind of like pump and dump kind of things. Uh, so the community, and then I'm going to give you a real life example, which was GameStop here. GameStop, you know, their stock price increased massively like overnight. It was like 100 times over uh, over the course of or actually several months. Uh, as members of the its meme community crafted a spectacular short squeeze. So there's a bunch of 
different things that you can do for some of these meme stocks. One thing is called a short squeeze um, and other stuff as well. You can also see, you know, some of the list here. Again, Investopedia is great for this. Um, but essentially, it's like just basically talking about a specific stock, you know, really, really heavily, really, really highly um, so that the amount of the stock price actually increases pretty much like overnight. Uh, so you just kind of like give it all the hype 100 percent of the time um, and then it really just raises the stock price up and then eventually it's going to come back down um, because that is kind of unnatural for that to do. And so what the Fed is saying is that, hey, you guys can't keep doing that because it's going to basically destroy the economy in that sense. Uh, and social media is like wonderful for this here, uh, but it's, they say it's potentially destabilizing the outcome uh, of the stocks and everything. Uh, so it kind of goes through a few things here as far as like cryptocurrency or not, not cryptocurrency, but uh, as far as what meme stocks are. Uh, until you get to think about down here such risk taking can help investors yeah because it's all a risk uh, increase their winnings when things are good and the market keeps going up but it also could place them in a more vulnerable and extremely um, uninviable position where losses can be dramatically amplified should the market ever turn over uh, stock prices have already increased notably in the back half of the of this year and the ratio of those prices relative to earning forecast are now nearing the top of their historical distrib distribution the report notes um, Wall Street media sites such as reddit's uh, subreddit Wall Street bets um, could also the could also the report notes allow excited new retail investors to create an eco chamber where people only in interact with with people uh, with similar points of views and financial stakes. Um, and this is one key thing here is because we're in a different world and a lot of people have been finding a lot of time to invest in stocks, get more into stocks uh, way more than they had before. And they're really just falling into the hype uh, blindly by all the news and, and you know stuff that comes out on social media uh, that is not very good. Uh, and basically the Fed is saying uh, or expressing concern <laughs> that if the Molotov cocktail that is risk taking online investors and social media eco chambers converging continue to grow ever larger, a potentially destabilizing outcome could emerge, uh, particularly since financial institutions, risk management systems may not be adequately calibrated to withstand a collective loss of confidence. Um, And yeah, the last part here had cracked me up. The um, they mentioned something here, and they basically said, in short, the Fed is saying that we might have to do something before Wall Street bets blows up the economy. Um, so yeah, so curious to know what you guys think about that. If you are a stock investor, or if you do uh, anything inside like the cryptocurrency world, or whatever, how do you guys feel about meme stocks? Again, uh, these meme stocks are just really one of those. Hey, we're just gonna hype it up for however long. Uh, I mean, GameStop is a really big company, so it's not, I mean, they're not going anywhere. Um, but when you get into the stock investing, it becomes a more of a huge risk for you um, to actually invest in them when you don't know really what's going on with it. Um, so, yes. Yeah. So, the last thing that I have here for you guys today is all about solar power um, and a new bill that literally just got passed yesterday. Uh, I think Tuesday, August 16th, and I want to go to that article as well. Uh, but real quick about solar power, if you've been thinking about getting into solar, I think last week I talked about EV vehicles, electric vehicles. Uh, now is a good time to do it. Same thing with solar power, same thing with heat pumps uh, to heating your home. Uh, right now is a wonderful, wonderful time to do it, uh, especially because the new bill just passed that you can now get a huge amount of tax breaks for it. Um, they're calling it, it's a big climate health and tax package. And it's basically around, you know, uh, sustainable energy, um, I think drug prescriptions and stuff like that, making them more um, accessible and more affordable. Uh, but the actual name for it is called the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, and this kind of this article here kind of goes through a little bit about it, what it entails and so on and so forth. So more broadly, uh, for every home that goes green, our community gets a little bit cleaner as less greenhouse gas is emitted helping to curb the climate crisis. 
um, has uh, certain incentives, including um, uh, what's it called? Yeah, there it is. So 30% federal tax break for rooftop solar installations for 10 years, uh, even the batteries that they use. So battery systems which store energy generated by the rooftop solar systems for later use, say during a blackout, uh, will qualify for 30% credit for the first time as well. Uh, rebates and tax credits for installing new energy efficient appliances, including heat pumps, electric stoves, and electric dryers, as well as new circuit breakers boxes which sometimes need to be replaced when retrofitting old homes uh, i know a lot of people that love gas stoves they like love gas stove they, they can't cook without it so it's going to be interesting for that um new incentives for developers to build uh energy efficient homes or to retrofit older homes so i guess new homes being built will be built you know kind of like with solar power in mind already um Yeah, the IRA's incentives, he says, will make it so much easier and uh, so much cheaper for working people and low-income people to access clean energy. Um, yeah, modernizing homes will still be expensive. Yeah, I think in the forefront, modernizing these homes are going to be expensive, um, but with these tax breaks, it's actually going to make it a whole lot easier. Um, and it's needed as well, in my opinion. Uh, sustainable energy, solar power, uh, wind power, um, hydropower all of that stuff in my opinion is the way to go uh, and i just wanted to kind of show you guys here that this date on cnbc published tuesday august 16 2022 uh joe biden signed the inflation Redu reduction act into law um the more than 430 billion dollar package is expected to reduce the deficit by more than 300 billion dollars uh, over a whole decade um, so yeah, you guys can read this article if you like as well. I'm going to put this article, the link for this article in the description. Uh, not much to say here other than <laughs> the bill passed really. Uh, so we'll see what actually happens with that. Um, so that is all I have for you guys here today. Definitely tap in with me on all my social media channels. All the handles are going to be in the description for this video, um, below, um, and check out some of those articles. I really want to know what you guys think about, um, how ethereum is moving over to that proof of stake if you guys think it'll work uh, if not why uh, let me know in the comments for sure let me know what you guys think about the nft um art galleries that are you know popping up i guess i mean there's more of them already as well i think i had an episode about an nft uh, vending machine pretty much um that came out in new york also new york is is coming out with a whole bunch of really cool stuff like just like miami miami is really big on the whole crypto stuff um, and then as well as digital fashion, do you guys plan on wearing digital fashion? Uh, I myself think it's cool because as you know, I'm really big into AR. So walking around with a plain white t-shirt on, somebody can scan it or plain white t-shirt with a barcode or a QR code on it. Somebody can scan it real quick and then see this whole elaborate, you know, really super cool, uh, outfit that I have on. Um, I think that is kind of like a, a, a new realm of fashion. To where we don't have to you know continually keep buying over and over again new clothing um just to again throw it in the trash like a year later all right so that is all i have for you guys here today thanks for your time joining in and i will check you guys tomorrow